All right, today we're gonna tackle the field. Try to get some more clearing done for pasture. It's gonna be a busy day. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, so let's see how far we get. So we've had people ask us if we're all about nature and permaculture, why would we want to clear brush from our land? Because after all, it's natural. So today we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit and step through our 50 acres here at Redgate Farm. Well, we don't know the exact history of this property, but we do know that there were cattle here probably in the early 1900s, maybe mid 1900s, based on recounts from neighbors and whatnot. We also have some barbed wire fence back there and some pastures on the east side of our property. In any event, what you see behind me is kind of an open type of forest. There's no underbrush, there's no honeysuckle, there's no invasive species like Russian olive. It's very clear and there's a very, very tall canopy. These trees behind me are anywhere from probably 50 to 100 years old and some of them uh, probably around 150 years old. This is a very healthy and balanced ecosystem. On the edge of this, you have grasses here and you have some briars. And this is where these wild blackberries grow and the deer love to come down here and eat. As you can see, again, a very balanced system. Joel Saladin said that the early pioneers had written about how they used to ride through open forests where there were no trails you could simply ride the horses through because it wasn't overgrown. And the grasses were so tall, you could tie a knot over the horse's back. Now, these grasses are pretty tall in the, in the summertime, but I don't know that you could tie them over a horse's back unless it was a Shetland pony. But in any event, I can understand what those early settlers saw because remember, there were millions and millions of buffalo roaming this land. So what do buffalo have to do with anything? Well, it's not just buffalo, it's all animals. Elk and the wildlife, you've got coyotes, the predator-prey relationship. But when large herds of animal, like buffalo, travel across areas, they eat and trample and leave their manure and create fertility. That's probably why those early settlers saw those tall grasses because of the incredible fertility that was spread by the animal kingdom. Well. What happens when you kill the buffalo or you fence them off so they can't get on your land? Well, it'll still stay pasture if you keep livestock on it, like cattle. And that's probably what happened here is they kept cattle out there and kept it really healthy. But in any event, whatever you have on there, it's going to create a balance. Now you take the cattle off and what happens? Well, you get an incredible amount of undergrowth. Small saplings like this, all of them now taking the fertility of that land and jumping up and trying to reach the sky before the counterpart right next to them. Now the vast majority of these will die off and only a few will reach the top. And then those will shade the rest out and you'll get exactly what we just saw. A nice open area underneath and a nice solid canopy on top. So the previous owner of this property logged the property which opened up the canopy and of course started the cycle all over again. You can even see in this felled tree here, these saplings, hundreds of them and thousands and millions on the property, shooting up to get to that canopy. That natural process is going to take decades to get back to the forest that we saw over there. But we can interrupt that. Now, tree fall is a great habitat for small animals, but everything is in balance. So if those small animals appear, so do the predators. And you see right behind me, there's a barn with goats and chickens. Now we don't want those predators around our goats and chickens. So we're gonna transform this back to pasture land and then have our livestock guardian dogs so that all the great habitat back there can balance with the predators and the small animals and not affect our livestock. Another thing I wanna mention here, as this regrows, one issue that we have today, which is very serious, especially in Illinois, is invasive species. Once you open up the canopy like this, you not only get the uh, yellow poplar that you see here and some of the oak and some of the other items that are native to Illinois, you also get Japanese bush honeysuckle 
you get Russian olive, you get Multiflora rosa. Those are invasive species. So you gotta be very careful. And in fact, we are in a program to try to eradicate this property of those invasive species so it can get back to a balance that is native to Illinois. I think we're going on about seven hours with just a couple little breaks in there and Michaela and I are pretty tired. I tell you that that brush hog is a beast and it goes through everything we've asked of it today but it will wear you out not to mention walking through all these hills we just every time we think we're making progress we find more trees and stumps and sticks and piles of dirt and wow what a mess but we are making progress, and right now Sean is trying to get the, uh, I don't know if you can see him down there behind that pile, but he's trying to get a little bit more in today. But I think we're about to run out of gas, and then we will have to stop for the day. I'm standing in an area where in the video prepping wild land for the livestock was filmed a couple months ago when we first arrived here, and we put our goats in here. They started eating this down. But since then, we were not able to move them all the way down through the winter. And so we actually rented a brush hog. Now the idea, and we've done this before, we did it at Redgate Farm, is to use livestock to transition this back to pasture. What's gonna happen is, now that we've brush hogged it, grasses will be able to grow up in there. And as the little sprouts come up and the little saplings come up, those are great nutrition for the goats. Now there is a tremendous amount of energy in the root systems of all these little saplings that we cut down. And they are going to take all that energy and put it up in the new sprouts, which is gonna go right into my goats, be processed through the rumen and dump back out as fertilizer. That's gonna create a very green, lush, healthy pasture that will sequester just as much carbon as the canopy that was on here before. And as you can see behind me, these piles were the deadfall from the logging operation. Now we could leave those there for habitat, but again, like I said, I do not want coyotes coming up here and chasing those mice and rabbits and everything that's gonna live in there. So we're gonna go ahead and burn those down. But we will rotate the goats through here until this naturally returns back to pasture. But you can see we have some big trees in here. We don't wanna take all of those out. I tried to keep straight ones. I tried to keep healthy ones. I tried to keep a variety of tree too. Not all oaks, not all yellow poplars. I want a good variety of trees for the health of the land. The other thing the trees do is provide shade for my livestock, for my chickens, my goats, my pigs, my horses. During the hot summer, you definitely want shade and you don't want them congregating around one tree. You want them to be able to move to different locations so they don't trample the earth below that tree and kill it. It's all a process and it's all about balance. Well, a couple of days of hard work and it all came to, well, what we wanted, a, an open pasture. We did do a little bit of overseeding. We didn't do that in the last farm, but this one we wanted to just because we really wanna get a jump on things and get those goats out here. I've got eight fires burning around me, but it's all safe because we've already burned all the duff off the ground and we've got fire breaks all around. So for a couple of days work 
and what about $85 for a bush hog? We have cleared a pasture. Well, as you can see behind me, the goats have quite a bit more to clear. Now, I gave them a great head start out here. In the springtime when the buds come up, they should be able to take down this stuff behind me uh, as quick as I can with a brush hog. And uh, they're a lot cheaper too. In any event, we did not use any heavy equipment because we didn't want to compact the land. This is full of unbelievable fertility and uh, it also holds a lot of water because of the organic matter. And we also don't use any chemicals. Uh, we simply let the land go back to a balanced case using our animals to take it to a pasture instead of a forest. Great video on desertification by Alan Savory. It's a TED Talk. We'll have a link for that. I, I suggest you watch that, and that talks about using animals to transition land. Well, thanks again for watching this week. Thanks to those who subscribe to us. And for those who don't, please do so because we want to take you along on our journey.